Elizabeth Warren had a proposal for putting a certain percentage of workers on corporate boards, right? Look, he's going, hey, hey, we're going to put we're going to put employees on corporate boards. That answer. creates a disparity, and then you say we're going to create we're going to fix it by putting people on corporate boards. How okay, about but you then you have economy? to answer why the billionaire class hates it. They don't. Time for a bonus installment of Change My Mind. For those unfamiliar, these are unedited conversations with an opportunity to rationalize one's own position. Now, in a prior episode on gun control, I sat down with this gentleman here, George, and it discussed why common sense gun control is actually nonsense. If you want to hear that conversation, click the link below. Now, we uh, just went into an impromptu conversation on uh, so-called libertarian socialism. It was interesting, and this is what Change My Mind is all about. Without further ado, here's George. I'm gonna talk about libertarian socialism with George, uh, because I think, look, I want to hear, the last time I really went through this was uh, was uh, college and then a, about a year ago. Really? Okay. Well, but in college when they described, anar you know, anarcho-syndicate anar socialism, yeah, and that's where yeah. you go, right? You go to like Chomsky, like Catalina, right, and you get to them. Catalonia. And then, I was Catal actually just reading Homage to Catalonia by Orwell. You should read it if you have it. I have. Oh, you have? Yeah, okay, I have. Yeah, and I always yeah. find it very interesting. Was it, was it Catalonia existed? Was it from a... Uh, was it from 38, it or did it stop in 38? It had to be. It was only about four years. 38. Um, it was only about four years before they were taken over by the Soviets. The war, yeah, but um, I mean, they just got raped by the Soviets. Yeah, and so the I wouldn't fascists, say a very good so, example. I mean, yeah, Franco did. Not so much thing. the fascists. The Soviets were the real problems for the Catalonians. I mean, <laughs> but okay, go ahead and explain you're to right. me. Yeah, okay. I um, appreciate this. I no, appreciate, no, I and, I, and I also appreciate. Where we, I think this is a good. Uh, time where we can have a dialogue like this, even though I wildly will disagree with you, I'll let you know That's that. Thing, but right? no one accuse the other person of racism, sexism, homophobia. It's like, look, you believe in this? That's fine. Yeah, let like, me hear it. I mean, like, like I said, I'm on the left, but I'm also not like an identity politics kind of leftist. Okay. Really. Yeah. All right. So you have so, no home right now. <laughs> Politically, you're there homeless. Is, there's a home. It's just not the leftism you see on Twitter. <laughs> it's just not what you see on okay, Twitter. Okay, so explain to me what you mean by that, that you're a libertarian socialist. Okay, so what I mean is, the way I see libertarian socialism is I see it as democratization of the economic sphere, right? Mm -hmm. So we've had democratization of the political sphere, right? We had that with like the Enlightenment, which led to liberalism, liberal democracies, that we, that's what we have today. Democratization of the economic sphere, I see as workers controlling their pursuits in their work, mm -hmm. controlling their workplaces, having a say in decisions uh, within their corporations, in the places they work, instead of a very rigid, hierarchical, top-down system where you have a board, you have the C-suite, you know, commanding orders from the top down. Mm -hmm. I think that if you work at a place like, say, Amazon, um, you should have an equal say in the operations of that company as Jeff Bezos does, or as, you know, anyone else does, because, I mean, you all work for this entity, you know? So a couple of things. Um, first off, I'm not a big fan of Amazon, but let me oh, ask you this. Really? Uh, no, yeah, no, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Um, how do you juxtapose that with the idea of libertarianism, which is the right of the individual? Because you just said that I it, think a that worker- that's actually entrusting liberty to the individual. Well, what about the liberty of the individual who invested all of that money and risk and resources into creating the company only to not be able to reap the rewards, right? Okay, How is it justified like, to take that by force, which is always what happens well, what with socialism, you, wait, what you, from Jeff Bezos? What do you Bezos? mean by that? What are you taking? Is, you it, his money? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, he, his workers are the people that provide the labor. The fruits of Amazon are because of his workers. I would they disagree. Are, really? Which, well, the, he started Amazon. He did There are no workers Amazon. without them. Do you really believe that the labor of, for example, putting a postage stamp is the same as someone who invested millions, potentially billions of dollars, lost it in their own savings, right? Invested in a company, built it from the ground up. Do you really think that they I, should be compensated the same? Here's a th I'm not saying that there should be equal wages. I okay. feel like that's, that's something that is so far, like from a socialist perspective, something so far in the future, it's not really even worth discussing right now. What I think... I think like it is important I because would, I need to know your end game. Oh, like what is... Yeah, I need to know in your, in your idea, sort of, and I think that you're... I don't think I'm mischaracterizing you and that this is sort of a utopia, which we know will never happen. Um, but what would that look like? Because as a business owner, I would never have started my, I employ 15 people, and by the what way, I pay I significantly think, more than 15 an hour. What I think. I would have never started it if I thought that I would have the same amount of say as I get my 15 that employees. because that is a lot of sunk cost that you put in into starting something, yeah. right? I made no money for half a decade. I understand that, but 
the way I see it, or the way I think companies should be moving in the future is towards like a worker co-op type of model, right? Mm -hmm. A model where, you know, there like there's true democracy in the workplace. You have workers discussing, all right, what is our company's operations going to look like? for this like what are we doing with x like everyone gets a say in it because everyone is affected by it right like if you are involved in a system and you have no say or no choice in how that system operates or how it um yeah literally just how it operates then i mean that seems well let me, let me ask you this so um because you just use the example of a system so if, if i may i'd like to go with sort of your allegory no, there um do you believe that every person who uses a system of iOS or uses a system of Microsoft? Do you believe that they are I mean, just? That's, oh, do you believe that they are just as? No, no, it's not. Do you believe that they are just as qualified in determining how that system should work as the person who created the system? No, because if you're a consumer of iOS, you're not involved in the like the facilitation of it. Like you're not. So let me ask you this, and let me scale it back a little bit. I was using your analogy of the system. Do you believe that people who work on the lower levels at Apple, on the floor, for example, putting together iPhones, or people okay. with people with whiteboards. Do you believe I that understand. they should have? I think I know where your they're just going as capable. In your specialization of labor expertise, I totally understand that. I'm not saying totally disregard things like expertise. Like if you have, say, Apple, you have very specialized employees working on a very specialized product that mm -hmm. they're selling, right? It wouldn't make sense for someone like a janitor working at Apple in order to be able to like deliberate how something like that. So then who determines which person's opinion People is permissible? People involved in the process. That's my thing. Is like Because it's the same thing I So you mean the all the workers? Workers, yes. So the workers would vote? Yes. Do you yes. not think that the janitors would vote for themselves to be well, specialized I mean, engineers? Well, I mean, I don't think that's exactly how it would work. It's hard to speculate as well how something like that would work with um, like I, Apple. Like a I don't think it would. Really? I don't think there's, I know, I'm just asking you like, why would the, you don't think the janitor would say like, oh yeah, I want to do that job. Why would they vote against themselves? My point is as a business owner, I have people who work for, 15 people work for my yes. business. I am so grateful that not all of them have a say in every decision that's made because many of them have no idea and many of them would that's not want thing. the responsibility not, of difficult decisions. I'm not even saying completely disregard expertise when it comes to making decisions that require that expertise and specialization, right? Okay. But I feel like- But how do you enforce this? Say Let's say the are, workers vote. Okay. Yeah. So in a free society, a libertarian society, the workers vote and the business owner says, no. Well, I mean, in that theoretical society, there would be no owner. <laughs> like all these workers would be equal participants. So then how do the businesses get created and started? Like I said, like worker co-ops. Like I feel like we should eventually move towards a system in which you have worker-owned cooperatives. So how do like, you displace the current owners and turn it into co-ops, right? At some point- Bernie Sanders actually, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren actually had, um, they kind of had a plan on this, okay. not exactly to the extent that I would envision it, but the same Elizabeth Warren who went after the GameStop yeah, betters and defended Wall Street. Here's the thing: I'm not. I know. A fan. I know <laughs> that you were pissed. At, you must have been pissed about that, right? I'm not. I'm not a fan of Elizabeth Warren. I'll tell you that. But all right, um, common ground. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they both proposed, like, hey, like we need worker representation on the board, right? On boards of these companies, like workers who work on these floors of these companies, workers who are doing a brunt of the amount of work that provides, uh, like what you love about Amazon is the fact that it's so efficient, is that they get you your shit in one day, right? Like the fact that they're very efficient in doing what they do, but that comes at the expense of these workers, that comes at the expense of, um, I mean, like you know. So I, well, I don't. Ag I don't agree with your, your premise that workers are doing the brunt of it. And I think that anyone. Who, and there's really? look. And here's the thing. Here's what's interesting to me. Okay, can so, I can I finish? Can I make a point no, here? Uh, yeah. What's interesting to me is, for example, if you look at the increase in corporate tax rates, okay, supported by Amazon, supported by all the big companies. You look at the lockdowns, uh -huh. supported by all the big companies, right? We've created more. And this is Bernie supported lockdowns. Elizabeth Warren supported lockdowns. Socialists supported lockdowns. They're the party of big business. Let me explain to you why. There are no more. No, let me explain to you why. We have created more billionaires this last year. Do you realize that? Than ever. No, billionaires have gone insanely rich. No, no, this but pandemic. only this last year. And there have been more middle sized businesses and small sized businesses that have sh been shuttered than ever before. Yeah, which now, is guess exactly what? Those mid sized businesses oppose the higher corporate taxes, oppose the democratic they, socialism. The only people who support it are Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Twitter. YouTube. Well, they support the your ideas, but people like me who employ 15 to 50 people are against it. You say it. they support my ideas, and yet 
I want democratization of the workplace. They definitely don't support that. Well, guess who's going to have the ability to get a waiver just like Obamacare? The big companies. So we'll have to dem democratize my workplace, but they Your won't do that at Amazon. Works. I mean, do we dis do you disagree with me that there are elites who have more influence and lobbyists for Amazon than absolutely. me with my little absolutely. YouTube I mean, channel? That's just that's just how this country operates. Right. It's like and the I just, influence of like effective oligarchs. And do you see like big tech companies like Jeff Bezos is of the world? And it's like, interesting that we're sort of we went from the bureaucrat phase to the oligarch phase to invoke sort of or Orwell, right? Which is where we are at this yeah. point. Where almost conservatives now, I th here's one thing where I think we can find common ground because a lot of people say like, well, you sound like a socialist to me. But let me explain to you why. Where I go, look, you have uh, five companies, the wealthiest people, increase their net worth by 600 billion in six months in this pandemic, right? Insane. Ex Insane. Like, we agree that that's terrible, well. right? Yeah. Do we both agree like that's... Absolutely. Now, we probably agree it's morally reprehensible. Yes. Same thing that all these billionaires are created when small businesses are suffering. Now, here's where we differ, okay? I think it's reprehensible. Not if they made their money honestly, I couldn't care less. If they, if Amazon made that money, I think it's impossible. Well, no, my point, point is, if they made the money it. because I chose their goods or services voluntarily, I don't have a problem. The reason they made that money is because of Elizabeth Warren's and Bernie Sanders and Biden's and Kamala Harris's who shut down the economy and determined winners and losers. In other words, Absolutely, I was precluded from going to a local grocer. I couldn't go to the local coffee shop. In Michigan, I couldn't go to the local nursery, but I could go to Costco and I could order from Amazon. Here's the thing, I totally agree with everything you just said, but our difference comes with the solution. Right, I don't believe I, that more government would make it better. I think more government I has think, made it worse. I think that government keeping these businesses afloat is not only good, I think they had a moral obligation to do so. But they didn't keep businesses afloat. No, exactly. That's They only problem. gave money to their wealthy That's donor class. Problem. And the exactly. worst offender is Bernie and Elizabeth Warren. Exactly. Warren. You have all these big companies. I mean, it reminds me of 2008 in terms of bailouts going to big banks, right? Right. Like, you have all these major companies who yep. are benefiting from this. And then the middleman, like the small guy gets cut out, right? They want to privatize profits and socialize losses, big banks. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You sound like a socialist now. But my issue is, guess what? <laughs> what if no company is too big to fail? It's a self. It's a self-solving problem. If you say we're not giving you money, if you say, well, yeah, look, we're not shutting down businesses. Guess what? In every single one of those scenarios, more government is not required to fix it. Yeah. Government created that problem. Government created subprime I, loans. Government view, decided to bail out banks. My view is government is sustaining that problem, and government completely has the power to eradicate that issue. Like when it comes to coronavirus pandemic, right? In terms of businesses failing, like what? Half of small businesses are never going to reopen, right? Yeah, it was, it was something like the last number, so it was 60% of businesses that are, were open in April would yeah. be closed by October. And like a Record lot of, profits and for Costco. And a lot and of those closures would be indefinite, right? Like, yes. My problem is the government had the resources and the opportunity to keep them afloat via stimulus checks, via um, like all the funding that... They um, actually didn't have enough, though. That's also the issue. I definitely They don't have they enough money. Though. Really? Okay. Yeah. Why they don't, don't... First, so two problems. They don't have enough money and... The money didn't go to the people who needed it. Exactly. That's like the money went to social. This is where you talk about how you're not an identity politic person. Yeah. The money went to things like critical race. There went to a bunch of bullshit earmarked projects. The money, and not to mention the policy, but favored giant corporations. A, that had to be such an insignificant amount of money that went to little. No, do you know like that, Joe Biden's right? infrastructure bill? Let's use his right now. Two trillion, two plus trillion dollars. Three trillion dollars. How much of it goes to infrastructure? Right. Um, I actually don't know. I haven't read this. Less than six hundred million. Really? Yeah. So what's the rest on? Bullshit. I'm just talking about 35 billion here, 200 billion there. Big part of it is for green New Deal stuff. Not necessarily I mean, not green infrastructure. infrastructure you know? No, not just infrastructure. How is that? But not proposing certain though? policies. Okay, 600 million, 600 billion dollars to infrastructure. My point is, it's a never-ending hole, right? For example, if throwing more money, if the government had money, throwing more money at schools, Washington D.C. and Detroit would have the best schools in the country. We don't have a money problem. We have a spending problem, and we have a, a corruption problem with the government, which I think we agree with. I definitely, yeah, no. I just don't think that we should put more power in the hands of the corrupt. I think that you're believing that inherently there are some people, some people who are altruistic. But what I'm saying is, probably the examples of people you would pick most: Bernie and Elizabeth Warren. Bernie, every single step of the way. If you do research, right, and I'm sure you have, but if you look at his policies ended up benefiting even i'm not saying he meant to ended up benefiting amazon costco walmart and then you had elizabeth thing, warren come out against the GameStop betters but my problem is bernie is one he's one socialist senator in a sea of what 535 federal i know can you imagine how bad it would be if everyone was bernie there would only be amazon democratic 
steal. That's my point, right? People like me were going, ah, don't shut down my business. And Bernie's like, shut down the business. I mean, but did he not support um, more government funds going to middle-sized businesses? But the businesses? point is, businesses, business owners are like, just don't shut down my business. But I... You I mean, can't like, fix the problem by giving, look, giving me $1,600 is not going to employ 15 people. The, no, that's not even, stim, like, not even stimulus. I mean, like, like, at that point, we were in a pandemic. Like, we've had, what, over 500,000 people die? Like, I feel like it's a very reasonable fear to have in order for us to be like, I don't think that it's reasonable to create the worst unemployment, economic devastation, increase in suicide rates, shut down schools over a virus with over 99% survival rate. It's definitely rate. had a bad effect, obviously, but... Yeah. Like, there, like, there's a public health thing. And I mean, we could get into, like, Fauci and how he's flipped positions on I mean, Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it? Because people are listening really no, closely to this. Uh, right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. I mean, for me as a public health official, obviously, I would like the consideration that everybody wears a mask. If you have a physical covering with one layer, you put another layer on, it just makes common sense. But that was, See, I think we would have a lot of common ground. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fauci's kind of a dick. <laughs> Is that, can we end no, on that? He, he's kind of a dick? He, yeah, he's kind of been touted as like the know-all when it right. comes to health and pandemics and He's but very, you're like, is it Fauci last very, week or this week? He's very noticeably switched positions, so it's hard. But and the it, point like, is, and the Fauci is, will never lose power under a socialist government. Do you understand I that? Just don't, People I like don't, him never lose power. I don't think Fauci so. has suckled at the government teeth forever. He screwed up. If you look at the response to AIDS, Fauci has been a charlatan. and he hasn't seen a patient in 40 years. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah, think about that. And the doctors who have seen patients have been banned from YouTube, saying, "Well, I don't think this is the right solution. I think Fauci is wrong." And then two weeks later, he goes and he agrees with them. So my point is I think we're so close but Fauci, Bernie, Biden, Elizabeth Warren these are career politicians and they don't care about you or me. There's plenty more to get to but I want to let you know that none of these episodes take place without your support and especially now that the entire channel has been demonetized indefinitely consider going to crowdershop.com get yourself some slick threads uh, we've got some cool new designs dropping soon thank you so much for the support no foreign caliphate we're funded by viewers like you actually on with the show I don't know I feel I feel like Bernie has been that one guy that has been speaking up for working people for poor people, I think he's almost been speaking every, up for almost that. every step of the way. I think. He's I mean, been, it's yeah. very, it's very like verifiable. Like you can go back to his history. You can go back to literally the 1980s, and he's saying the exact same things he's saying now. That's such a marked change from every other politician in Washington right now. Like, I, I agree. He's been consistently wrong, been, in my opinion. But I do that's agree. Where we disagree. No, but here's like, the, yeah, no, I he's think he's consistent. genuine. He's definitely. I don't genuine. think he's. I don't think he's genuine he's as far as like. I don't think he's genuine as far as like. He's personally very not generous. If you look at the way he tips and his charitable contributions. So I always. I I'm always leery that. of someone who wants to spend someone else's money and never their own. I don't uh, even think it's spending other people's money. I feel like it's. But I do believe that he. I do agree with you. He's been consistently socialist. Now I would ask you one thing before you go. So you said, and I agree with you. You can consistently look at his policy. You can consistently look at his positions. I should say, um, because if I'm not mistaken, wasn't he a mayor? He was and then a he, was, mayor he was a state Berlin, senator, and then he was a senator, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like he's, he, he was at the House at some point. Yeah, I think right? he was at the yeah, House. Maybe he was, he was House and then house Senator? At some point, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but if you look at his proposed policies and what he has supported through this pandemic, it has his types of policies. Let's say everyone voted in the House, right? I'm just a bill. House, Senate, 100% agreed on the policies that Bernie supported. You would only be left with the trillionaire class. And then afterwards, you would say tax them more. But the point is, at that point, the damage is done. I don't know. I just... Oh, shutting down businesses, get rid of the GameStop betters, right? This is, it's just, to me, I go, okay, I think his heart may be in the right place, but pragmatically speaking, it always ends up screwing people. I don't know. I feel like he just definitely has been speaking for common people. And back to, uh, I was going to say something about Warren and Bernie's okay. proposal. And then we, we do have about, to go, yeah, we okay, but I appreciate fair. it. Yeah. Thank you, George. Um, no, for sure. Um, him and Elizabeth Warren had a proposal for putting a certain percentage of workers on corporate boards, right? I feel like that's something that is like a market change that we can slowly move towards a more democratized workplace. Now do you, okay, but let me, I understand what you're saying, but here's the point, right? It's, like, the, guy's, you, the guy's palming it. Do you, not do you understand what that term like means, right, with magicians when they're palming something? Look, look, he's going, hey, hey, 
we're gonna put we're gonna put employees on corporate boards. Okay. Meanwhile, you know what you know what creates more of a disparity of power? Shutting why? down middle-sized businesses and small businesses. But then you have to crippling answer. them with taxes. Then you have to that answer. creates a disparity, and then you say we're gonna create we're gonna fix it by putting people on corporate boards. How okay, about but you create You have economy? to answer why the billionaire class hates him, why they're so They don't Amazon supports do. the increase no, okay. in the I'll increase you, in corporate I'll taxes. You, I'll give you maybe the most perfect illustration of this. During the Democratic primary, you had after he won Nevada, this was before South Carolina. Well, let's I hold think. on a second. Let's use national elections. Primaries are different because no, primaries no, it's, are it's betting important. on who's going to win important. the primary. It's important. It just goes to show like the views of the billionaire class, right? Yeah, who overwhelmingly supported Democrats, not Republicans. No, it's not even close. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. It's not but, even close. But. but. I feel like they do that for optics reasons. There's definitely an incentive for them to, to seem appear. woke. Exactly, exactly. All right. That's why I'm not into the whole identity politics. Or I would also argue much. the reason they do it is because these giant corporations know they can incur a 30% corporate tax and they can incur all kinds of red tape legislation and come out unscathed, whereas small businesses can't. I mean, definitely. I, I definitely feel like there is. Is it a tornado warning? I feel it's an amber alert. Oh, it's an amber alert? alert? So, yeah. But, um. I just forgot what we were talking about. I know, about. damn Amber. <laughs> right? No, 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 it's serious. No one should, we're not joking about Amber. <laughs> we're not joking about Amber. No. Um, no, I, look, look, I would oh, have to go. Oh. Okay, believe your point. Go in our class. And by the way, can I just say, I really enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What's up? Um, what you had after Nevada, before South Carolina, you had establishment Democrats who were panicking. All of the ones that were backed by billionaires, yes. all of the ones that were backed by muddied interests, they were panicking because and Bernie the Democrats seemed themselves. like he was going to win. So what happened? You had Pete Buttigieg drop out of the race, right? You had Amy Klobuchar drop out of the race, right? And in return, I mean, like Pete is now head of the Department of uh, what Transportation. Like these yeah. are, like, they, no, I, I agree they with you on coalesced that. against him in that moment because moneyed interests see him as a threat. Well, can I, I ask you like, something? When you say they coalesced, I want to make sure we agree. You mean corporate donors and the other Democrats, right? Yes, that's exactly what okay, I mean. Exactly I agree. what and I mean. And my point yes. is, apply that to a national level. Corporate do donors still coalesce with other Democrats, and that's my concern. No, what they, they did, to, what they did to Bernie, but my, they'll do to us. But my whole point is the fact that they want, like, they're so fearful of coalescing around someone like Bernie because he poses such a direct threat to their interests. I think, what poses, I, think I think what poses a direct Which is why I think he's genuinely a man of like working common class people. Like and He's it's never just, worked so. Oh, he was a carpenter. Like he's had He's never had full time gainful employment. No, he's not since college. Definitely. No, 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 he Come hasn't. On, this guy Tyler. has not not in 40 Come years. On. But let me tell you this. Let me and I understand where you're coming from, but let me say this. I mean, I agree with you, but there's a though. slight difference though. Let me get tell you where there's a slight difference. The, difference. the difference is I do think you were right that they were afraid of Bernie becoming the nominee. Now, the reason why is because they knew that when you looked at those polls, Bernie was imminently beatable, and they wanted to have a Democrat in power. I feel like that's definitely a point. They definitely thought that he would be a loser candidate. Right. But and they want to make sure that their Democratic bidders do sure, it for them. For sure. For so sure. So it's not that they oppose both. Bernie. I, it's that I, they want to. But the point is, after a national election, then we have to go the primaries, and we have to go to the national election. Overwhelmingly. Why do you think Amazon and Google and Facebook, why do you think all of the biggest companies overwhelmingly support Democrats and seemingly anti corporate policies? I mean, in terms of optics, I mean, the country okay. is sort of moving towards, I feel like we're in a sort of anti corporatist, I guess you could say. Why do you think big banks back Democrats? Um, I mean, I don't know. They both like they back both. Like it's not even solely a Democrat Republican. They've been consistently thing. backing but Democrats. It's de but it's definitely part of like an optics thing in terms of identity politics. Like it's stuff. Like I remember there's a Wells Fargo. I think I think there's a component of that. I also like, think that yeah. they stand to benefit financially off the backs of us. Yeah, and I mean I don't know. Like I remember a Wells Fargo ad about recognizing the LGBT community, and I'm like, all right, you don't give a f about the LGBT community. Like you're saying, so like, like someone walk in saying, and be like, you suck. D you can't open a checking account. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, that doesn't offend you, does no, it? it? Like doesn't. that's not even anti gay, it's just a fine. joke. No. Um, See, I can get along better with a with a socialist libertarian talk than I can with a white woke talk, bitch. Talk to more libertarian socialists. I feel like that's Let me ask you this so as, a, as, a, as a black guy. Okay? Is there anything more annoying than white woke feminists who speak for you? I mean We've been like, through a few of them today. They're like, well I think black have you people really I haven't seen that. And they're like talking and I'm like, black people don't feel that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I do hate white people speaking on my behalf, yeah. for sure. It's annoying. like, the black community is seen as a monolith by both Republicans and Democrats, which is a problem to me. 
like we are expected to have a uniform view of seeing the world which I mean if you actually talk to and by, any, I would say by black people too sometimes I mean yeah it's it like it's been let me say one thing that I feel really empathetic and I, we do have to go okay but I will say this one thing and he you know quarter black Gary is my producer <laughs> He's a. It's funny. We didn't realize he was black for like. His dad is really black. Which one is he? Him. He's black. His dad is like biracial, but looks black. But then he just looks totally white. He does look like there's a bit of ethnic ambiguity. He looks like he there. might be like Mexican. So for we only found out when we asked him like, can you? What does that mean in English and Spanish? He's like, why do you think? I, why do you think? He's like, dude, I'm black. We were like, what? This is after six months. But um, I, what was I saying before this? I totally I don't, forgot. I don't oh, even oh, oh here's one thing I will say because he's an example too. You know, if, if you look at a lot of his relatives and his cousins and his dad, you know, they, they look more black than he does. Um, but one thing that I do look at with young black men today, and I go, oh man, I didn't have to deal with that as a white guy. Is, for example, we have fans who watch the show, and like one example comes to mind. He was like a black kid who was like a metalhead, and he was like, oh yeah, all my black friends say I'm not black. No, yeah, that's it's because you're expecting. I go, you know, as a white person, no one no, ever tells me like you have to like this. It's like, oh, he likes country. Oh, he likes hip hop. Oh, he likes this kind of food, it, it, and that's not pressure exerted from white people, but it is something that comes that's from me. both spheres, honestly. Because like, yeah, because that sucks. It, I would imagine I, that's like an that's not a systemic no, oppression, it but it is these expectations like of a black kid feeling from other suck. black kids that it's, he's not yeah, black no, enough for sure. And I mean, like I've experienced that like growing up. Like it happens, but. I, definitely something that I, I never got to change that. and I feel like it's constantly reinforced to the point where I don't know if it'll change anytime soon especially with white woke bitches. I they mean, keep been reinforcing it I think especially with Republicans to be honest oh come on now no I we were leaving it on a good note there's definitely a way Republicans you really black feel people. like I'm pigeonholing you more than a white woke feminist I don't think you believe that. I mean, certainly your party is more directed against the interests of the average black person than a Democrat. So even if a white woke feminist is spouting her bullshit, saying she knows that... You're talking to me. You're talking to a person here. <laughs> you're, an, you're an anarcho... So you're a libertarian socialist. Yes, yeah. And I am... You said you're the left... I'm to the right of Attila the Hun, okay? I am not Jesus. a fan of Republicans. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I like Donald... Attila I like Donald Trump in a lot of ways. Uh... Uh, there are some Republicans that I like, but I've been pretty pissed off with a lot of Republicans and they're, so how, they're kowtowing to the tech, tech oligarchy. How do you square support with Donald Trump for his... I don't, okay, well, I hate to, his, I keep saying we have to go. For his support of that system we were both just criticizing. Well, Donald Trump has resulted in the lowest African-American unemployment out of that, any Republican, and there are more black Americans who voted for Donald Trump than any other Republican in recent memory. You yes, it, abso it absolutely was. You know it happened I think freedom him, for all is freedom best, is, you know, is best for all. Here's the thing, I, as a libertarian socialist, I agree, I believe in freedom, but... Oh no, you don't. I don't. You don't? You believe in taking over companies from people and establishing a company board. That's not freedom. That's not, no. That's totalitarianism. I believe in workers having a say in their company's and operations. And I believe in businesses that, being able to own their that own businesses. That is true economic freedom to me. Not, not but that's what, not the definition not of freedom. Mm, Alright. <laughs> but, here's, okay, here's one thing I think we can both agree on. Free speech is absolute. Absolutely. Yeah. And certainly, right now, you would have to agree that the Democrats oppose that more than any other political there party. There is definitely a trend of censorship, which yeah. is concerning. But, yeah. I mean, the thing about free speech that makes me so sad about that is that was such a left, a leftist ideal, a leftist value. The fact that you hear other people's points, because it, it's just derived directly from, like, enlightenment liberal thought, you yeah. know? She, well, there was a girl here who got really mad at me earlier who brought up, like, Huck Finn that it used the N-word in the book. And she goes, and we shouldn't have, I think she was implying we shouldn't have it in audio books. And I said, what? She goes, well, if you were reading it in a class, would you say the N-word? I said, well, yeah. If I was reading the class and I'm reading a book, if I'm reading a book and we're all in the class reading it, and uh, she was wildly offended. You know, Richard yeah. Pryor, his album. Um, Richard Pryor is really interesting comic. <laughs> He's the best really? comic ever. He's definitely up there. He's definitely up there. And he I said, I don't him. want white people to call it one crazy N-word. He's I like, why would you change the name of my album? I love him. I love Chappelle. I love... Yeah. I don't, you know Andrew Schultz? I do know, I, do, I don't know him personally, but I am familiar with him. You know, it's funny, everyone that you mentioned, you know, I go Pryor, Murphy, Chappelle, I just don't find Chris Rock funny. And I had someone say, that's racist. I go, look, come on. <laughs> I just said Pryor is one of my one. favorite ever, ever. <laughs> Patrice O'Neill, obviously. George Carlin. Oh yeah, George, George Carlin. Carlin. George Carlin, well, yeah. I got Bill Burr. I mean, the point is, if you're funny, you're funny. Yeah. And Trevor I mean, George, Noah's painfully unfunny. George Carlin I want to throw him out a window. For being honest. George Carlin was an anarchist. 
George Carlin became a grumpy old man, but George Carlin <laughs> certainly did, wouldn't, certainly wouldn't really agree with YouTube in the seven the words you can't That's say. That's why he became what he became. Look, do you think George Carlin would be fine with this? Right now, if I say this word, it's removed from any and all social media. We'll bleep it. George Carlin would say, oh, if you say that word, they remove you from everything? That's bull****. I mean, he would say that's bull****. I, de like, I think it's disrespectful to people to say it. I don't think I was referring to a car. <laughs> All right, but we do, I do have to, listen, I appreciate it, brother. I George, it, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. I think yeah. we disagree a lot, but I think we did. this yeah. is exactly what, yeah. I wasn't even planning on talking about this, but no, I appreciate I'm it. I'm actually very glad we got to talk about it. Thank you, man. Yeah. It. Thank you so much. Oh no, now I've got to pee again. There you have it in time for you to sound off in the comments below. Is libertarian socialism a, a thing? Did you, did you learn about that in, in college? How do you think they juxtapose with one another? And do you think socialism in general can ever work? And as always, uh, comment which topics you would like to see covered most in the future. Appreciate it. I love most of you because I have to. Bye. Well, you're still here up on the internet. That's a, that's a miracle. This is long and there are no cats playing piano or midgets on tricycles. But uh, look, there are other Change My Mind videos. You can click here. There's some uh, new ones coming up. And if you want to support the show, look, you, you, you guys all know about Mug Club, but you can get some of these Fight Like Hell shirts at CrowderShop.com. That's the best way to support us. Um, also, if you know someone in Qatar with oil money, uh, my number's not hard to find.